In this video, I'm going to show you how to insert dynamic Google Maps, online games, and other kinds of exciting online content into your PowerPoint presentations. So here I have the beginnings of a PowerPoint presentation, and here on slide two, I would like to include a map of Spain. I could certainly take a screenshot of a Google map like this one, and then put it into my presentation as a static image. That's not hard to do. But what if I want it to be dynamic? I want the viewer or the students or the presenter at the time of the presentation to be able to move around, zoom in on different parts of Madrid in this case, and interact with the map. How would I accomplish this? Well, step one is to go to Google Maps, do a search for the area that you're interested in, and arrange it on the screen the way you want it to look in your presentation. You can zoom in, zoom out, using these controls here, or the scroll wheel on your mouse. You can also click here to change the type of map that you're looking at. I'm going to stick with this map here, but I'm going to arrange it exactly the way I want it to be in my presentation. At this point, I'm going to click here in the upper left corner on these three horizontal lines, and I'll just go down here to where it says Share or Embed Map. When you click that, it gives you a link that you can share that will send other people to the exact same map that you're looking at. But that's not what we want in this case. We want Embed a Map. So click that, and then you'll click here to copy the HTML code for the embedded map. Switching back now to PowerPoint, how do I get that map onto my slide? Well, it's going to take a special add-in that you need to get. To get it, just go to Insert and look for this Add-ins button. Go ahead and click that and click Get Add-ins. And the add-in we want in this case is called Web Viewer. If you don't see it in that list, you can just do a search, Web Viewer, and it should come up and then just click Add. You'll need to agree to the terms and conditions, and then just click Continue. And now this Web Viewer add-in is being added into PowerPoint for me. And a copy of it is being put right onto the slide. Now that the add-in is on my slide, I can go here to this box, erase the URL that's there, and I'll paste in the embed code that I copied from Google Maps. Now you have to be careful when you do this. If you look here at the left, the add-in is automatically putting in the HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash. It's already added those. So if I go to the beginning of my embed code, you can see that I also have HTTPS here in the embed code. And that's not going to work. You can't have it in there twice. So I'm going to click and drag to highlight the forward slashes and everything in front of them. And then I'll delete those out. And now I'll click preview. And it sometimes takes a few seconds, but look what it did. The Google Map that I had set up online on Google Maps, and it's embedded it right into my PowerPoint presentation. And this is a dynamic map. As you can see, I can browse to the side, north, south. I can zoom in on the map using this plus sign here, and it dynamically updates in my PowerPoint slide. I can zoom out. If I want to, I can switch to another kind of map right here in PowerPoint. If you'd like the map to be a little bigger, that's fine. You can click on the corner, make it bigger, or this corner, any of the corners, you can click and drag to extend the map out, make it bigger. Now it's not only possible to do this with a Google map, but also with the street view. As you probably already know, if you click and drag this little icon of a person and drag it onto one of the roads in an area, it will take you to street view. And this is a series of photos taken with a 365-degree camera, and it's interactive. You can click and drag, look up, look down. You can even navigate down the street by clicking on the street ahead of you. You can zoom in. So this is also embeddable. I'm going to zoom back out. And to get the embed code, I'll click here on these three dots. Click Share or Embed Image. I'll choose Embed a Map. Copy the HTML. And then back in PowerPoint, let's go to a new slide. Now this time, because I've already installed the add-in, I don't have to click Get Add-ins again. Instead, I'll just go to My Add-ins, Web Viewer, click Add, and that add-in is put onto the slide. Once again, I'll delete the Wikipedia URL and paste in the embed code. And then I'll go to the very beginning of that embed code and delete out the two forward slashes and everything in front of them. I'll click Preview and it worked. Now I have Street View embedded into my PowerPoint slide. 
Let's try out the presentation as if I were showing this to a class full of students or in a board meeting or something. I'll just click this button to start the slideshow. There's my title slide. There's my map of Spain. Notice that it is dynamic, even in presentation view. I can switch back to this other type of map. I can zoom in. When I'm ready to go to the next slide, I can just click over here or use the space bar or however I would normally advance the slides. Now let's look at Street View. Is it possible to go down the street in this embedded version of Street View right in PowerPoint? Yes, it is. I can look up. I can look to the side. What a great way to transport your audience to a location. Show them on a Google map, take them to Street View, and embed it right into the PowerPoint slide. I'm going to tap Escape to get out of my presentation. And in a couple of minutes, I want to show you some of the options and features that you have with this Web Viewer add-in. So keep watching. But before I get to that, I want to let you know that this works not just with Google Maps. It works with all sorts of online content. For example, what if I wanted to include a flashcard set for my students so that they could practice the countries and capitals of the Spanish-speaking world? Okay, I'm going to type flashcards, and then I'll click away from that text box, and then I'll just click add-ins, my add-ins. I'll bring in the web viewer again, click add, and now I'll go to the internet, and I'll just head over to Quizlet.com. If you haven't already watched my tutorials on Quizlet.com, you definitely should. And I'll do a search here for Spanish countries and capitals. There's several different flashcard sets, but I'll go with this one here. Click on it. And then if I browse down the page a ways, underneath the flashcard set, you'll see three dots. You just put your mouse on the three dots, choose Embed, and then choose the type of activity that you want the students or the audience to do. Click Copy HTML. And then back in PowerPoint, once again, I'm just going to paste in the URL, getting rid of the two forward slashes and everything in front, click Preview, and there's my flashcard set embedded into my PowerPoint. Now, in this case, it's pretty important that you expand the window a little bit. Otherwise, you're not going to really be able to see the flashcards. But look at that. Now, when I go into presentation mode, you can see what the students would see. They'd be able to click to see the capital that goes with the country. They can click this button to get to the next Spanish-speaking capital. Click to find out what country it's part of. So I hope you can see some of the potential in this. And anytime you're on the internet and you see that term embed, you should be thinking, hey, this is something that I could bring in to my PowerPoint presentation using the Web Viewer add-in. One last example that I want to share. What if I wanted my students to see this web page? This lists 22 Spanish-speaking countries of the world, and it has their flags and other information about each country. I may not see an embed code here, but that's okay. I could just click on the URL, copy it, and because this is just a simple web page, I can go back to my PowerPoint presentation, once again go to the Insert tab, Add-ins, My Add-ins, bring in another copy of the web viewer, paste it in. Now this time, it's simply a web page, it's not an embed code, but still, I need to get rid of the two forward slashes and everything before, click Preview, and now the web page is part of my slide. Now, it is possible to make it so that the web page fills the whole slide, and I could have done that with the maps as well. If you choose to do that, just be aware that when you present your presentation, it might be a little harder than normal to advance the slides. So there's my web page. It's part of my presentation. I can scroll through the web page, but just be aware, if I click on anything here, it's probably going to take me out of PowerPoint. I'm going to tap Escape a couple of times to get out of my slideshow. And next, I just want to point out some of the options that you have with your Web Viewer add-in. Once you've added in content, notice that you can edit it by clicking the Edit button here in the lower right. In addition to that, in the upper right, you should see a button that you can click to delete the add-in out of that particular slide. If there's some problem with how the information is pulling into the add-in, you could click Reload, click Preview, and it resets it. I haven't had to do that very often though. Another good option is to show as saved image. Now if you do this, it will convert the dynamic item, whether it's a map, a web page, the flashcards, whatever it is, it will convert it into a saved image. So now that I've clicked that, when I play the presentation, that map is no longer dynamic. I can't click on it and move it around. I can't zoom. It's just an image. 
Sometimes, though, that's just what you want. So I hope that you'll find ways that you can use this Web Viewer add-on from Microsoft to make your presentations more interesting, more visual, and more interactive. If there's a lot of interest in this video, I may make a follow-up video showing how to bring in all sorts of other content using the Web Viewer add-on. Things like voice recordings, online games, and much more. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do subscribe, click the bell so you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, consider clicking the Thanks button below the video. You could also support me through my Patreon account or by buying channel merch, and you'll see information about those options in the description below the video.